So this is Dr. Kenneth Hughes talking about thigh lifts and thigh lifts vari variations. There's really, you know, quite a deal, quite a good deal to talk about about thigh lifts. I mean, when people look at thighs, the question really is, is you know, what is the relative problem with the thigh? You know, is it uh, is it truly a skin laxity concern, or is it a lipodystrophic or you know, this bulk accumulation of fat in a certain area, a combination of both. And then what areas does it affect, okay? So, for instance, uh, probably the most common inner thigh lift, the, you know, the inner thighs tend to create some bunching of skin over time. The skin tends to become, become redundant, and that can lead to, um, you know, concerns, cosmetic concerns. And then the question is, how do you address that? Well, you address that by looking at the relative deformity. So, for instance... If a patient has uh, mild laxity or laxity limited to the upper inner thigh, then there are several procedures you could consider. If the laxity is significant, you're going to have to perform some type of skin excisional procedure. And then the question is, what is the scar pattern? So you can do a growing incision thigh lift in which the incision is placed within the growing area, and that's a relatively concealed incision, of course. Now, you know, it, that's appropriate for about mid-thigh concerns down or relative relatively control kind of a skin laxity concerns, okay? If you have kind of a global skin laxity or laxity that extends from basically the growing area down to the knee, you're going to opt for more of an extended thigh lift. Or if a patient isn't willing to have that extended thigh lift, you're going to have to tell them, hey, you know, you can only expect so much because the force and the tension placed across the closure is only transmitted so far down the leg. If you're doing growing incision thigh lift, you won't get any tightening below the level of the mid thigh, obviously. Now with an extended thigh lift, the incision basically runs from the growing incision can include the growing incision, the thigh lift uh, kind of scar pattern and extends all the way from the growing in, all the way down to the medial knee and it can, you know, extend beyond that if you really need to. Now in general, I don't extend it beyond joints because if you're getting around a joint extending beyond joints, patient's going to have more movement problems, okay? Uh, never mind the fact with, you know, poor scarring, keloid scarring, hypertrophic scarring, just if you, even if you have a good scar, you're going to have some attendant kind of scar um, uh, tethering concerns, which can lead to uh, mobility issues. So the real question in a lot of these surgeries is not, you know, what is the scar pattern or what is it that the, the surgeon is intending to do, but how that is executed. So talking about it is not as material to the result as, you know, what exactly is excised and how do you make that determination? When I'm in the operating room, I tend to basically take uh, a stapler or towel clips or something of that nature and kind of bring the skin together and form the pattern that way. And that is the most reliable because the skin tension is never uniform and neither is the relative deformity of the thigh. And so the pattern is not going to be an ellipse. I mean, by its very definition, it's not going to be ellipse. And so when people mark out those types of patterns on the leg, that's fine, but it, it ends up being far more complicated than that. And if you want an optimal result, not a conservative result, you'll do that. So it's a balance between kind of closing the incision, getting it optimally tightened versus the incision opening. And that can be very frustrating because as a surgeon, all you can do is create the optimal results on the table. And then after that period of time, if a patient you know is not adhering to the healing regimen, opens different areas, or just isn't a good healer, the scar is going to be widened. The pattern is not going to look like the pattern that you finished on the table, and the scar is not going to look the way you finished on the table. So there's a lot of variability in healing, and there's a lot of variability in you know how patients follow instructions. And I think a lot of that's uh, attendant problems or you know issues in the recovery can largely be managed if things are strongly adhered to. So that's basically the inner thigh lift, growing incision version extended. There are various variations. Sometimes you make the incision, you know, extend into the growing area. Sometimes, you know, the laxity doesn't stop at the growing area. Sometimes it extends to the lateral thigh or the posterior thigh. And so you've, you know, no, there is no one solution to these thigh lift issues. And then it becomes an issue of, you know, what is the patient willing to give up? What, you know, where, where can you place the scar? And you need to basically, what I basically do is I tell the patient, hey, this, this scar needs to be placed here to produce the optimal result or this scar needs to extend here so that you don't end up with dog ears or you know a bunching type of phenomenon and you know patients can't look at that and determine that but it's readily ascertainable if I even look at a picture I can tell you about how long something would go now I also perform a lot of revisions and things of that nature and so those are far more complicated because when you get in there the relative scar resistance is not predictable by physical exam and so the relative depth of that scar the tightness of the scar and all those things can be very very different okay so 
a lot of these surgeries just involve trust, and that's why, you know, on YouTube and things of that nature, I'm posting these very difficult surgery videos. Now, unfortunately, YouTube's taken every opportunity to age restrict and basically prevent the uh, dispersing of information to the populace. So, you know, that, that's very frustrating for me because my surgeries aren't easily explained just in, by verbiage, okay? You need kind of that visual, that visual cue as well. So, uh, you know, even though in videos like this where I'm basically showing you kind of photo examples and whatnot, that's very frustrating because I could very easily walk you through a surgery. Unfortunately, they age restrict or basically delete the video. So, you know, is plastic surgery education dead? Not yet, but it's close. So that's why I make some of these videos to kind of give you some insight into this. And so on as a kind of teaching lesson, as you look at the, the before and after photo that I provided, patient has a lot of lipodystrophy and kind of skin laxity confined to the upper half of the thigh. And so while you could certainly do an extended thigh lift on that person all the way down to the knee, you really are going to get a lot of improvement by just doing an incision either in within the groin or extended just halfway down the leg. And so that's what I mean by everything needs to be done in appropriate fashion. And then it becomes how conservative or how aggressive you are in the resection. And you can see what type of result is possible. Now, can anyone generate that result? Absolutely not. But in the right circumstances in a patient who follows the post-operative guidelines and heals as it looks on the table, you can generate these kind of phenomenal results. And that's what makes plastic surgery satisfying by and large.